Hello everyone, thank you for stopping by my channel today. My name is Daryl and I am in the workshop today and we're going to do a little bit of a update. Things that I want to get done, things I haven't gotten done, things that I should have gotten done, update. So since the last time I think we talked in one of these videos, I had been working on the closet build-in and I have taken a step back from that over the last month or so while I got the tower put up and try to get things situated with that. Um, kind of turning back that way now to try to start working on this thing and get it completed. Um, the little things that we haven't finished on that is the transom, the doors, uh, and the drawers. So other than that, everything is uh, done with that except for those things. So I need to get busy on that. Another thing, uh, as far as the tower, the tower's up, everything's functioning well. And since I got the tower up, I have something in my shop that I wanted for a long time and never had. Let me turn the camera around and I'll show you what it is. I got internet in my shop. Yes, you heard it. Finally, I have inter internet in my shop. Uh been a long time coming we've been here for five years I've been trying to deal with just Wi-Fi out here and it's been a not very fun time with that so when I got the tower put up we decided to change internet providers and go with a RF uh, based in internet so no cables from the provider to me it's all done via the airwaves and it comes down from my tower and then comes into the shop here and this is what i have so you'll see down here this is it's a power over ethernet so this is the power supply for the dish and this is the router that i have so the blue line is running down to my computer down there so i have that connected directly and uh the cable here goes up through the ceiling and into the attic and then up my tower to the antenna. So let's go outside and we'll look at that. Okay, we're out here at the tower and I'm going to pan up and way at the top of the tower on the left hand side there, you'll see there's a little dish. And uh, that dish is pointed at a tower that's probably about a mile from my house. And the cable that comes out of that uh, router that I showed you, it comes down the tower and then it comes, loops over and comes through the pass through, through the attic and down to that router. Now the plan is to bring a wire back out of the pass through from the router and then run it through my cables that I'm going to be burying. Actually, I'm not burying the cables. I'm going to dig a trench and uh, bury some like uh, four inch pipe and then run these cables through that. But right now I've been using a router set up in the house that's repeating the signal that I'm getting from the Wi-Fi out here. And I have not needed this cable, this extra cable at all. Um, it's running all the, com it's running our computers in the house. It's running, you know, the Wi-Fi for the house. I can get the Wi-Fi in the house from this Wi-Fi out here, but it's, uh, I got full bars in the house with the Wi-Fi currently, the way I have it set up. So I don't know if I'm going to run that other cable. If I run the other cable, then I got to put a router in the house, and that's an extra. I think they charge five bucks a month, five or six dollars a month extra for that second router. And I don't really need it right now because right now I got a router in there that's supplying my internet to the house. So uh, the next thing that I need to do is bury this cable. And that's going to be probably about a month off before I get to that, at least. Um, I will tell you why right now. The reason why it's going to take uh, about a month or more before I can dig the trench and get take care of these cables is because I'm going to be having hand surgery next week. The day before uh, 
Thanksgiving, I will be having surgery on my left hand. I have trigger finger on the middle finger of my left hand. And if you don't know what that is, it's when your fingers, when you go to close your finger, it locks closed. So I had it on my ring finger of the same hand a couple years ago. I had that operated on. It's been great ever since. But about the last, I don't know, about eight months, maybe more, I've uh, developed it on that finger right next to it. So I am finally going to have surgery on that and get that corrected. So I won't be able to do any kind of really manual, hard manual labor. Like I'm going to rent a trencher to do the trenching and I don't want to operate that thing and maybe hurt my hand before I have the surgery and then have to postpone it because it's taken a long time for me to get to this point where I've got an appointment and I'm going in to have it done. So uh, it was just a lot of delays on the medical side of it. So I definitely don't want to screw that up. So I've been taking it easy. Uh, I did make the video where I put the brakes on, but it wasn't really that strenuous, but uh, I haven't been operating the chainsaw. I haven't been uh, really doing much of any manual, hard manual labor, I guess, uh, trying to just be careful of that hand so I don't hurt it before the surgery. And of course, after the surgery, I got a little bit of recovery time to go. So that's what the delay is and kind of really everything because I don't know want to operate the table saw to work on the built-in because I'm waiting for the surgery. So everything kind of got put on hold. Okay, I came back to the shop because it's a little bit more comfortable in here, sitting in here, talking to you. Uh, I wanted to just talk about one other thing that's been going on with me uh, for the last few months. Um, kind of a life-changing situation for me. I'm not dying. <laughs> I don't have cancer. Um, I've been diagnosed with alpha-gal syndrome, uh, AGS. And alpha-gal syndrome is when you become allergic to all mammalian meat, all red meat, beef, pork, venison. I'm allergic to that. I'm allergic to all dairy right now. And alpha-gal syndrome comes from being actually just being bitten by a tick, the Lone Star tick, that has the alpha-gal uh, sugar in its saliva, and it bites you, and then you get alpha-gal. Well, some people have a low amount of alpha-gal in their body, uh, the, the sugar and it uh, it doesn't affect them as much as it affects me my number is really high um, a good number if you have yourself checked for alpha gal you would want to be about a point zero seven to point zero nine is what I've what I've been able to find out um, I'm at two point nine eight so I'm pretty high in the in the scale of High to low, I'm in the high region. I'm not extremely high, but I'm pretty close. I'm knocking on the door of extre extremely high. So when I got it, uh, I didn't know, of course, I didn't know I had it, but I knew I was having some issues. And uh, one night uh, after eating, I went to bed and I woke up probably about, you know, I probably went to bed around 8.30 and... I was woke I woke up probably about 10 30 11 and I couldn't breathe uh, I had to get out of bed real quick and try to get some breaths into me and uh, went out to the living room and sat in the recliner for many hours waiting for it to pass and I kind of thought it was a um a an allergy of some sort that I was having some kind of allergic reaction and Come to find out, yes, I was. So I ate a hamburger one night, had the problem. The next night, I ate a hamburger again, had the problem. Ate a steak, had the problem. Uh, but I would be, I, I just, my throat was swollen and uh, my sinuses were, were plugged. I was having all kinds of uh, uh, like intestinal problems, uh, just body aches, just really in bad shape. And I thought maybe I was going to die at some point. Um, it's just a long story. And one, one, one day, maybe I'll just make a whole video on this. But I, I do realize that from the little bit of a problem I was having 
years ago, about seven years ago, I started having issues with hives for no reason. And I definitely think that I've had it all this time, but as I've been bitten more and more by this Lone Star tick that itself was infected, uh, I got worse. So this spring, I got bit by maybe four or five ticks in the house, you know, in bed while sleeping. The dogs probably brought them, brought them in and uh, that put me over the edge. And I started having these full blown allergic reactions. So I have an EpiPen I have to keep with me now. And there's, you know, a lot of the healthcare professionals don't know much about this or some of them don't even know at all. Um, I, when I was, one of these nights that I woke up the next morning, I didn't get better. So I went to the urgent care to try to take a, I thought I might have COVID. So, but I had already researched alpha gal and found out that that's a good possibility that's what it is. So while I'm at the urgent care, I started feeling lightheaded and sick and all those symptoms came about me. And I ended up going by ambulance to the hospital because my heart rate dropped to around 35 to 25 at one point and I was in bad shape. And uh, the, the doctor in the emergency room thought I was having a heart attack and he kind of wouldn't budge from that and never checked me for alpha gal. So the next week I went to the my own doctor and had him test me for all tick-borne diseases because I was already suspicious of alpha gal and it came back positive as alpha gal. So I kind of diagnosed myself and through testing, uh, that was confirmed. So if you're out there and you're eating meat, if you're eating hamburgers and steak and pork, and you're having issues with hives and just gastrointestinal problems, and they go away, or they start, you know, mine start about, uh, it's, it's typical for a reaction to start between two and six hours after you eat the meal. It doesn't happen like right away like it, it would if you have a, like a, a peanut allergy, you might have your allergic reaction right away. This is a delayed reaction and that's what throws people off. They don't realize that that meal they ate six hours ago is now the cause of what they're going through now. So if you believe that you might have that, um, it doesn't cost that much to have the the uh, test done. Um, just check yourself for all tick-borne diseases, including alpha-gal, and you might be surprised. I think there's a lot of people walking around out there that have it and don't have don't know. Um, one of our neighbors passed away uh, months back, and we found out it was due to a tick bite, but we are not sure if it was because of alpha gal or not. The death rate is not very high, I guess, for dying from it, but I can't. I myself can go into anaphylactic shock, so I have to be extremely careful with the foods I eat, and it's been that has been the roughest thing of all, trying to figure out you know, what foods I can eat. I can't go into many restaurants. Like I haven't been to a sit down restaurant since August when I first found out that I have it. Uh, it's been hard shopping, uh, trying to find foods that don't have dairy in them that, you know, that the natural flavors that they put in stuff could be made by, uh, mammalian sources. So you got to be really careful with that. Um, it's just been really, really hard. All the things that I love eating, like hamburgers and, and uh, pizza, has been rough because I can't have sausage on there. So I've been making my own pizzas, and I've been getting quite good at it. And uh, uh, But finding a source outside my kitchen to have a have a good pizza has been really rough. I, you know, I can't have mozzarella, I can't have sausage, I can't have pepperoni. And all those with a little grease and everything... That's what makes it taste good. So it's hard. It's hard trying to figure out how to do, how to make my food to where I still love it. And it's me cooking it because I'm not that great of a cook. So, you know, we're using, my wife and I use an app called Fig, F-I-G. And what you do with this app is you can go into a store and use the scanner on the app to scan the barcode on the food and it will tell you if it's safe for alpha gal or not and if it's uh you know if it's a yellow it'll tell you why uh it's just things like sugar 
sugar is hard too and think sugar's not com doesn't come from a uh, mammal and sugar doesn't isn't dairy but sugar can be processed with i guess grinding like mammalian bone grindings like they filter the sugar through that so some of that can get into the sugar and that could cause you to have a reaction it's very odd uh, i didn't know that you know that can that they process sugar like that not all sugars are but uh if you buy a product that has sugar in it you got to be careful for that so it's a lot of taking a little bite of something and waiting six hours and see if you have an allergic reaction and if you don't you give it the thumbs up and you can eat that product but you don't know if that product's going to change along along the line so every time you eat it it's a, just a it's a crap shoot as to whether you get sick or not so i've been really careful about what i've been eating and i have lost like i think i've lost like 25 to 27 pounds since august just by not dieting but by not being able to eat I'm not eating the same foods that I was. I mean, a very lean. I can eat turkey. I can eat uh, turkey. I can eat chicken. I can eat fish. Anything that's not a mammal, I can eat. I can't eat dolphin, I guess. Um, I can eat emu, but I, I don't know about that. But I can eat a bird. I can eat a fish. But I can't eat a cow or a, or a, or a pig or a venison. I can eat deer. So... That's been rough, and there's a lot more people out there with it than I knew of. Well, I didn't know anybody was out there with it until I got it, and now every once in a while I'll talk to somebody. Like yesterday, I found out someone has a friend who has it, so, and somebody else on my road has it, but I don't know who it is. So, but I just want to let you know that it, and the reason why I'm just talking about it is because I wanted you to know that it's out there and you can get it. Um, the northern states, not so much, but down in my region and south and southeast of the United in the United States is where you're more likely to get it right now. But I think it's moving north, so uh, it might become an issue at some point for other people. It's in other countries too, not just the U.S. So definitely, if you believe that you may have it, I would get yourself checked because I'm telling you, since I've been on my new diet... All my body aches and things that I was, you know, having issues with. I thought, oh, I'm just getting old, you know. Uh, all those have gone away. I feel better now than I have felt in a long time, which leads me to believe, and my wife concurs, that I've had this for probably about seven years to some point. But this this spring is when it all came to a head, and I got worse because it's cumulative. The more ticks you get bit, like if you don't get it full blown right away and you have just a little, your number's low, it's cumulative. So you can, uh, you can get it worse. The more tick bites you got, the more tick bites that are from an infected tick, I guess, is you're more likely to build your number up and you'll get more and more of an allergic reaction from that. So uh, a lot of times if you get checked early and you know you have it, you can do take steps to avoid getting bitten more. So I definitely say if you think you have it, do something about it now and find out if you have it and go from there. And maybe you won't be allergic to everything like I am. Like now I'm not allergic to everything, but you won't be allergic to uh, at the level I am. I mean, if I eat a hamburger, I believe that I probably may die. <laughs> so I don't eat them. I want one really bad. I cannot tell you how much I'm like, oh, maybe if I take a bite and I can just taste what a hamburger tastes like, but I, I can't do that to myself. And I won't go see the allergist until uh, the week after next. So uh, we'll see what the allergist says when I go. Um, but I'm hoping that he says that uh, I can tolerate milk or dairy a little more but uh, i i think the allergy is probably going to just tell me don't do any don't do any of it because you don't know this i could go i could drink milk or something like that a couple of times and not have any reaction and all of a sudden whammo i'm i'm in anaphylactic shock so i can't do it so it's going to be a and this might be something i have for the rest of my life so i'm just trying to make just life-changing changes like you know, I'm cooking my own chicken, whole chickens and things like that. And trying to come up with recipes like gravy. 
trying to make gravy with no milk, you know, and uh, using like uh, I got cashew milk that I'm going to try to make gravy out of. But I made gravy uh, yesterday and uh, it had no dairy in whatsoever. It tastes pretty good. <laughs> so, uh, but it wasn't without its uh, dangers because I used uh, a product called Better Than Bouillon and uh, it has natural flavors in there. So the chicken bouillon I used uh, had sugar and natural flavors. So you don't know what the natural flavors are because companies aren't going to give that up. That's what makes things taste the way they do when they don't want their competitors to know it. And they don't want you to replicate it at home. So they just don't tell you what's in there. So they don't even tell you if it's got mammalian meat in it or mammalian uh, uh, sources or not. Uh, so it's all one big crap shit. But uh, anyway, that's what's going on with me. And that's why I'm kind of losing weight. Because I have been. <laughs> and um, it's really slowed me down a lot. Uh, I'm getting getting now where I'm eating better. But I'm just not eating enough. I mean, I, I'll eat a meal. And I feel like, like I'm full. But it's really a meal of lean meat. Like chicken or turkey or fish. And... Not a whole lot of calories and not a whole lot of fat. So I'm trying to figure out what to do. And, you know, at some point I might have to see a, a nutritionist and try to, you know, try to figure out what to do to keep my, at least my weight stabilized. So right now I'm not complaining about losing any weight because I need to lose some pounds. But at some point I'm going to get to a point where enough's enough and I got to stop that and, and try to hold my weight at a certain weight. <laughs> uh, so, but... I wanted to just sit down, and that's, I didn't really title the video Alpha Gal. Uh, I got Alpha Gal or something like that, but uh, definitely uh, it's something to be concerned about. So I didn't even know it existed until I got it. And uh, I've been, like I said, I've been feeling awesome. When I'm not eating something that I'm not supposed to eat, I feel great. So. Uh, I've been having a lot more, you know, it's been a lot easier to get around too because I haven't been, I've lost some weight, but, uh, and I've been sleeping good and everything, but, uh, the, the trick of trying to find foods that won't cause me to have a reaction has been really tough and going out to eat. I've gone out to Subway cause I can watch what they're doing and I had to check out their bread and make sure there's some breads there that don't have dairy in them. And I've gone to Taco Bell and pretty much those two places and that's it um because i can't see what how they're preparing my meal like if they uh like i want used to go out to breakfast every friday with some of the ham ham guys and their wives and uh but if they make my eggs and they scoop them off the griddle with the same spatula they they scooped up someone's you know sausage with or bacon with that can, that cross contamination could cause me to have a reaction. So it's been tough trying to find a place to to eat that I can trust. So at some point I'm going to have to confide in uh, one of the restaurants I go to and just tell them, hey, I have this uh, allergy, and can you try to do your best not to contaminate me? <laughs> but uh, anyway, so if anybody out there has it, leave me a comment and let me know how you have uh have gotten through it <laughs> it's not terrible I man i'm it's not like i'm dying or i have cancer or or something like that there's lots of people out there have worse things going on in their lives than me so mine is just a food allergy that you know i don't get to eat some of the foods i want to eat so uh i can deal with it um, i don't want to because i miss certain things but i i will have to so um, but it's taken a long time to get that through my head. Like I, I messaged my, talked to my brother and told him, you know, what I have. And he's like, sh just shocked by it. And I, uh, what am I eating? He, he texts me, what, what do, what can I eat? <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And that was kind of how I felt too. When I first got it, it's like, I didn't know what I was going to eat because everything I looked at in our cabinets was all a no, no. So, um, I'm not a vegetarian. I'm not a vegan. I'm an alpha gal person, I guess. So, um, but uh, I can still have turkey. I can have uh, on the chicken and fish. So, 
And maybe one day, if I stay off of it long enough, maybe my numbers will come down. I don't know. Um, we'll have to see. But anyway, that's the reason for the delay of all the things that I need to do. Like I'm behind on so many things uh, because I'm, A, trying to get this finger surgery or hand surgery or finger surgery, really. And then uh, the alpha gal is also slowing me down some. But uh, good news is I wore a, a halter meter for uh, well, about four or five days uh, because the emergency room doctor thought I, was, I had a heart issue and that came all back great. And my chest x-ray came back great. So I'm, I don't have any issues there. So, but he never admitted that uh, I was right and he was wrong. So I don't know. I might have to have a talk with him one day and, and maybe change his way of thinking. So he needs to maybe listen to his patient. But I, there's, I'm sure there's some people who stay at home all day diagnosing themselves on the internet and, uh, and they probably get tired of that too. So, um, but I would like to one day talk to him about the fact that I do have it and, um, and see what he has to say, because I don't think he really knew much about it. And I, I think there's some doctors out there or healthcare professionals that don't know anything about it or know very little about it. And I think science knows some about it, but not a lot about it. So anyway, I, I didn't mean it to be a whole uh, video about this, but I did want to uh, make a video and kind of tell you where I'm at and what, what's going on in my life and where all these projects are at. I have a lot to do, so... But uh, I just want to, uh, once again, just say, if you think you have it, go get yourself checked. And at least if you it comes back uh, negative, then you know that uh, you don't have it and you, you, know, you can start watching out for ticks. Or if you do have it, watch out for ticks. But uh, you might find that, uh, you know, maybe one person that watches this might find out they have it. And that might be the cause for, for the way they feel after they eat a meal so anyway thank you for being here today uh like and subscribe to my channel please it helps me out and i'm hoping to one day get at least a thousand subscribers um but i don't know if that's going to happen but anyway i don't make it for really truly i don't make the videos to get numbers up i'm a ham radio operator i i like to talk to people i mean if i had a uh, like a I don't know, like a video channel, like an interactive channel where I could have an audience. That would be great for me, too, because I do enjoy that. But anyways, uh, I do like making the videos. I don't have all the great equipment to make it, but uh, I do like doing them. But uh, I'm learning a lot along the way, too, even with the editing. So <laughs> bear with me. Hey, I'm, I'm not young, as young as I might look. So anyway... Thank you for being here today, and I hope to see you back again soon.